Okay, I'm going to go through just a general introduction to acids and bases. So, an acid is a covalent compound that releases hydrogen ion when it's placed in water. Okay, so it can be any covalent compound that does this. Um, and this is basically a special class of covalent compounds. So when these compounds are not in water, they're just considered a covalent compound um, and they're all still together. So it's not an ionic compound that is dissociating into ions when it's put in solution. It's an actual covalent compound where the covalent bond between the hydrogen and some other atom is being broken or ionized when it's placed in water. Um, now what happens when this is placed in water and it releases that H plus is the H plus actually associates with a water molecule. Okay, it forms what we call hydronium ion, an H3O plus ion. Okay. Um, so even though sometimes when people talk about acids, they'll just focus on that you have H plus in solution. Other people will, you know, stress that there's no H plus. It's all H3O plus. Okay. So when there's all those water molecules around, what happens is water is a polar molecule. It attracts, you know, the negative portion of the water molecule attracts the positive charge of that H plus. And so they kind of temporarily bind together. Um, and so that's an important thing to realize. So say like that we took HCl. So HCl, you know, when it's not in water is a covalent compound. It's a binary covalent compound, hydrogen chloride. Um, but most often in at least general chemistry, introductory chemistry, when we deal with HCl, it's in water. And if it's in water, then it does ionize and it behaves as an acid. Okay, and so what it does, it splits up into H plus and Cl minus, and the H plus combines with H3O plus, forming hydronium ion, and what's left behind is Cl minus. So this picture up at the top, you've got HCl molecules shown, and when that's placed in water, so what they're doing is actually using that pipette to bubble in HCl, so they have HCl gas in it, and they're pushing those gas bubbles into water and what happens is some of them dissolve okay and the ones that dissolve they actually ionize and what then you have in that solution is h3o plus from the h plus that came off of the hcl and you have cl minus ions okay floating around in that solution okay um, and so that's what happens with any acid any any of these covalent compounds that can donate this H plus um, from their structure, when they're placed in water, they will do that. And you'll always have hydronium ions then in that solution that has an acid. Uh, but you'll also have some anion that's left over. Okay. Um, now we have different types of acids. Most often, when you're just getting introduced to chemistry, you focus more so on inorganic acids. Uh, and so with that, you can kind of break those down into a couple categories. You can have binary inorganic acids, and you can have polyatomic inorganic acids. So the binary ones are ones that have H with some monatomic ion. Okay, so it's really just hydrogen and some other element. Okay, and when you put it in water, that is a covalent compound that releases hydrogen. Um, and then if you have a polyatomic inorganic acid, then essentially that's hydrogen attached to some polyatomic ion. Okay, and when it's placed in water, the H pluses come off of it and leave behind a polyatomic ion. Okay, a poly. Uh, polyatomic anion okay um, so HCl what's in that top diagram that's an example of a binary or inorganic acid okay so it just consists of hydrogen and chlorine and you know it splits up and the monatomic ion that's left over is chloride 
Okay, whereas I've got some examples down there at the bottom with polyatomic inorganic acids. Okay, and so HNO3 would be a polyatomic inorganic acid. So HNO3 is covalent when it's not in water, but once you place it in water, it ionizes. It releases H plus, and what's left behind is NO3 minus, okay? And so I'll write that down. When this is placed in water, you would get H plus and NO3 minus, okay? And the H plus would then bind to a water molecule, and the NO3 minus will just get surrounded by other water molecules, okay? And then we've got H2SO4. If that's not in water, it's a covalent compound, but if it is, it's sulfuric acid. And so that one, it splits into H plus and SO4 two minus in water. That one's actually a little more complicated than that, but we will keep it simple, stick to that. And based on the formula, see it's H2SO4, you really have two H pluses for every one SO4, two minus, okay? So it can actually release two separate H pluses. Uh, and then the carbonic acid, the H2CO3, that's similar. And so that one um, can split up into H plus, so two H pluses and CO3, two minus. Okay, so that's what happens. It splits up when you place it in water. That one, like the sulfuric acid, is a little more complicated than that. Um, but right now, I just want to, you know, get a grasp of, in general, what does it mean when we say something's an acid? Okay, um, so inorganic acids, again, those are ones that usually you use in kind of general and and introductory chemistry courses a lot. Um, if you go more into chemistry, you might expand into dealing with organic acids. Um, so organic acids are acids that contain a CO2H group, which I lost my subscript here. That too should be subscripted, so it should be a CO2H meaning there's two oxygens, okay, um, which that group, when it's on some organic structure, that is called a carboxyl group. And actually down at the bottom here, I have um, what the bonding structure is. So the CO2H group is actually always, oh, oops. no, that wasn't supposed to happen. There we go. Um, that's always carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then bonded to an OH. Um, and so that group of, you know, atoms, that particular connectivity, that comes up quite a bit in organic molecules, um, which, you know, are common in foods and in body and plants, all kinds of stuff, right? And so that type of structure, um, is capable of releasing that hydrogen off of it as a hydrogen ion, thus act as an acid. Um, and so if you go into a field where you're dealing either with um, environmental stuff or with uh, the body, then you would deal with organic acids for sure, okay? Um, so that's just some general information about kind of what is an acid and how does it behave? Now let's talk about bases. And bases are substances that react with an acid. Okay, in aqueous, if, if it's an aqueous solution reacting with an acid, it's going to form water, okay? Um, we're not going into more complexity of acids and bases. They do get much more complex. Um, but in general, when people are talking about a base, they're talking about some substance that is going to react with an acid. And when they say acid, they mean something that's donating a proton or giving up H plus. Um, and so then the base interacts with that. It's actually going to react and end up forming water. Okay. Water and something else. Um, 
So what happens, the reason that it's reacting with the water and or reacting with the acid and forming water is because the H plus that comes from the acid actually ends up reacting with the OH minus that comes from the base. And that's where the water comes from. So if you combine a hydrogen ion, H plus, with a hydroxide ion, OH minus, you get a water molecule, okay? Um, so that means the base in some way is providing OH minus, okay? So the OH minus part is coming from the base, and that could be directly, that could be indirect. So let's talk about those two scenarios. Um, so you can have hydroxide bases, meaning compounds that contain hydroxide within them. And what happens is when they're in the presence of an acid, they will break free that hydroxide and allow it to react with H+. Um, and so these types of bases are ionic compounds, okay? And so when you place them in water, they split into their ions, and the anion portion of these are hydroxide, okay? And so what happens is they just split up. So if I have NaOH, that would split up into Na plus and OH minus, and the OH minus then is free to react with the H plus of the acid, okay? And so, so those are going to directly provide OH minus in solution. Um, but there are other substances where it's a little trickier to determine whether or not they're a base, okay, or to, to be able to identify substances that are bases. And those are non-hydroxide bases, okay? So you can have substances that within that substance there's no OH, so there's maybe not even oxygen in the compound. And if there's not even oxygen in the compound, most people would say, well, it can't, you know, create OH minus if there, it doesn't even have oxygen, um, but it can do it in an indirect way. Um, this is really common in organic chemistry, okay? So, again, dealing with biological things, dealing with environmental things, you're always dealing with organic compounds and those things. Um, so, in that case, it's very common to deal with bases that are non-hydroxide bases. So they don't directly, you know, contain that, so it's not as obvious. Um, but when you're dealing with those, most often they're nitrogen-containing compounds, okay, which we call amines. Um, and so when you have some nitrogen-containing compound, very typically those compounds can take an H plus from water, okay? And so if you think about a water molecule, that's H2O, if you take an H plus from it, what is left behind is OH minus, okay? So that in an indirect way creates OH minus, okay? So this first example here I have there, NH3, that's ammonia, um, or you could name it systematically and call it nitrogen trihydride, um, but we would call it ammonia typically. Um, so if you took some ammonia, some NH3, and you bubbled it into water like they're doing in this, this picture here, what would happen is those NH3 molecules, they would attract H plus to them, okay? And since it's in water, water molecules can actually split and give H plus and OH minus. And so that's what happens is the NH3 turns into NH4 plus, Okay, because it picks up H plus from the water, meaning that what's left of that water molecule is OH minus. Okay, so it behaves as a base by basically ionizing water. Okay, so if you go more into acid base chemistry, you look more at that, which I'll do in some other videos. But right now, this is good enough to just get a general sense of what is an acid and what is a base.